Hi, I'm John Himmelman, and I write and illustrate children's books, and I'm also a naturalist. And since I write about a, a lot of things that interest me, I tend to write a lot of stories about nature and animals. Uh, first off, I just want to send a thank you out to the Meg's Point Nature Center at Hammonasset for suggesting I work with them on this little project. It's been a lot of fun to do. And today's story is simply called Box Turtle. And this came about, I had, I had gotten to thinking about how box turtles can live over a hundred years. Uh, not, most of them don't, but some of them do make it well over a hundred years. And so much happens in the world in the span of 100 years. And these are basically things that happen around the turtle. And I wondered how these things might affect a turtle who basically spends its whole life in that same area. Uh, the world changes, but the turtles, still a turtle doing turtly things. And th this is from uh, the existence of passenger pigeons, which are now extinct to supersonic jets booming overhead. Uh, oh, be before we get going, I also want to thanks uh, say thank you to Pam Meyer, who does turtle rescue and rehabilitation, and she allowed me to photograph a bunch of her uh, rescuees, which was very helpful for the illustrations. I got to shoot them in all different angles, and I got to spend a little time with a bunch of box turtles, which is really cool. So uh, let's let's hear a story about a box turtle. Box Turtle, written and illustrated by John Himmelman. So let's start with the dedication, which is usually in the front, but here it's in the back. And it says, for Bruce Dodson, who has spent decades keeping the forests and fields of our little town of Killingworth, Connecticut from disappearing. And Bruce Dodson is the heart and soul of the Killingworth Land Trust and he and the land trust have, over the many years, have protected, uh, oh, hundreds and hundreds of acres of, of open space land, woods and uh, forests and lakes and ponds and meadows and fields, all kinds of things. And that's what land trusts do. They, they buy land or they have it donated to them and they protect it for forever. Um, they keep that land wild. So let's begin our story because uh, land trust will play a, uh, pretty much a big role in, in this story. A box turtle is born. And in this story, this, this box turtle was actually born in 1892. And you could see some passenger pigeons flying in the background. And uh, that's kind of to show how long ago this was. Uh, passenger pigeons became extinct in 1914. Uh, the last one died in the Cincinnati Zoo and her name was Martha. She was like 30 something and then we've never seen them again. Um, you see horse and buggy there in the background. Again, to give you an idea of how long ago this, this turtle got here. A turtle roams the forest growing large on leaves, insects, and mushrooms. I even threw a few black flies in there, which are just happen to be out now. In the summer of 1897, she lays eggs of her own. I have a six spotted tiger beetle. The following summer, the turtle walks along a dirt road. A newly built house sits at the end. I hit a couple nut hatches in there. Can you find them? And again, we still have the horse and buggy. Still a long time ago. Over the years, more houses appear along the road. 1909. It's a warm summer evening. The turtle catches moths attracted to an electric street lamp. And I'm kind of a, a moth nut, and I threw some of my favorites in there, some pale beauties, rosy maple moths. We have a Neus uh, tiger moth. That cat could be trouble. 1913, rain falls on a spring morning. A car runs over her shell. Uh-oh. The shell is chipped, but she is not hurt. You see a little chip right there. 15 years pass. A boy from one of the houses brings the turtle home as a pet.
The young man graduates high school in 1932. He brings her back to the woods before heading off to college. I have a few critters in here too. Here's a, a fairly new arrived house sparrow, fisher spider, some kind of strange birds running in the background. I don't know what they are. You probably do. 1935, the turtle hears a roar in the air and looks up. 20 more years pass. More roads now cut through her woods. Houses surround her. And wherever people goes, litter follows. Nineteen fifty two, on a quiet autumn morning, the turtle shares a meal with her granddaughter. She turned sixty a month ago. It is the first time they have seen each other. And you could tell the granddaughter from the grandma, that's that's grandma right there, by their shell as they get older. Their shell gets worn and smoother and it, it sort of um, gets a little duller in color. Got a little bottle cap here. And they both move on. And you can really see the difference there between the young turtle and the older turtle. 1986, a new sign is tacked to a tree. People walk through her woods and she is watching. And these people, what are they doing? They're cleaning up. They're cleaning up her yard. And it says here, protected open space. And I mentioned land trust earlier. So this piece of land that she was living on was just uh, bought and protected by people who are going to clean it up and keep it wild. And I think that's a good thing for the turtle and for that rabbit and for that titmouse. 1992, happy 100th birthday. A plane flies overhead in a twilight sky. The turtle does not look up. She is used to the noise. If you hit a few metal katydids in here, there's a SST, a really fast flying jets that aren't around anymore. 2005, a cat paws at her shell. And that cat happens to be my cat. That's Chloe, who was the model for this, this illustration. Uh, there's a sphinx moth in there, two spotted ladybugs, and there's a couple of red-tailed hawks flying in the background. And this guy's got satellite. The turtle has seen many cats and dogs come and go. She hides in her shell until the cat moves off. The turtle's home has grown wild again. She could barely see the homes around her. Can you see the goldfinch? 2008, an old man comes across the old turtle. It looks familiar to him. Were you my pet so many years ago, he asks. 2008. Which brings us to the end. And we join our old friend for a quiet, firefly-filled summer evening and hopefully there'll be many more to follow.